All right, in this video, I'm going to be going over some double angle formulas uh, examples. Here's the double angle formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. It says that sine of 2 times an angle is equivalent to 2 times sine of that angle times cosine of this angle. And you can read the rest from there, right? All these thetas are the same theta that's here. So for sine, cosine, and tangent, which really means that I also have the cosecant, secant, and cotangent, because I could evaluate these flip the final answer to get the secant value. I did an example like that with the sum and difference formulas. All right, so here we go. One example, given cosine of theta equals negative two thirds and that tangent of theta is less than zero, it wants to find co cosine of two theta. All right, so let's see here. I don't know what theta is, but I am given these hints. So what do I do with these hints? Well, I draw a reference triangle, so y and x-axis, draw the y and x-axis to figure out what quadrant we're in, because that'll tell us a whole lot. Cosine is negative, so that means I must be over here or here, in quadrant 2 or 3, because the cosine is negative. X values would be negative over here. It also says that tangent is negative. Well, if tangent's negative and cosine's negative, that means sine must be positive, because tangent is sine over cosine. So if sine was negative, and cosine was negative, that means tangent's positive. It would be a negative divided by a negative. So my reference triangle should be drawn over in the second quadrant. All right, so here's my theta. And cosine, if we go back to Sokotoa, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. And it says negative 2 thirds. Now which one should be negative, the hypotenuse here or this adjacent? Well, the adjacent. I went to the left too. The hypotenuse in these reference triangles is always going to stay positive. I'm only going to switch the sign of one of these adjacent or opposite sides, okay? Now, should this side be positive or negative? Well, it should be positive. It's going to be the sign, and we went up. So what is this, what is this side length here? Uh, using the Pythagorean theorem, this side squared plus this side squared equals this side squared. The way that I do it in my head is I think this is 3 squared, that's 9, minus this one squared, which is 4. So this is going to be square root of 5. And again, it's going to be positive because I went up. All right, so I've got my reference triangle, and now I could tell you all of the trig values, or the trig function values for sine, cosine, tangent, all of them. But it's asking for cosine of 2 theta. So cosine of 2 theta is equivalent to, using my identity, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And so that's why I need a reference triangle, because I'm going to need sine squared theta. So let's see. Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And I didn't mention this earlier, but there are other formulas that are identities for cosine of 2 theta. The, they include, let's see, let me look over on my paper here. They include, hmm, stand by. Oh, they include 2 times cosine squared theta minus 1 and 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So there's other formulas for this. I'm just using this one, all right? So cosine squared. Well, that's going to be negative 2 thirds squared. Adjacent over hypotenuse is also given in the problem. Cosine theta squared minus sine squared theta. So that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, square root of 5 over 3, that quantity squared. So all I do now is square everything. This is a negative number, it's all going to become positive, so that's going to be 4 over 9. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, minus, square root of 5 squared is 5, 3 squared is 9. So we've got 4 ninths minus 5 ninths, which is negative 1 ninth. That is my answer. There's nothing else to simplify, there's no square roots, everything's good to go. So the cosine of 2 theta, given all that stuff, is 1 ninth. So let's do a more difficult example. The more difficult example would be this. Draw a line here. If I said, find, or evaluate, tangent of 2 times cosine inverse of negative 2 fifths. This is a common place where people get stuck. All right, so this is all that I'm given. New problem, not connected to this at all. It is connected to the formulas, but it's not connected to that reference triangle. This is all I'm given. Now, cosine inverse. Anytime I'm given an inverse, the result is an angle. The result of an inverse trig function is an angle. So this is going to give me an angle. This is going to give me 
tangent of 2 theta. Now what's that theta look like? Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a reference triangle given that cosine inverse hint. If you go back to the cosine inverse lessons, you'll remember that cosine inverse only maps to quadrants 1 and 2. Sine and tangent map here, but cosine maps over here. Which means that I've got to be here or here. So cosine's negative, so I can't be over here. I've got to be in this quadrant. So the inverses are easier because they tell you, oh, it's automatically going to be in one of two quadrants. Since it's negative 2 fifths, I know it's got to be here. So this is negative 2 adjacent. I went to the left 2. Hypotenuse is always positive. There's that one. All right, so now what is this other side? It's going to be positive, so I've got 5. I'm going to square this. That's 25 minus this is 4, so this is going to be root 21. Okay? Square root of 21. Now I've got a reference triangle, and now I can use the tangent double angle formula to figure that out. So tangent of 2 theta is e equal to 2 tangent theta divided by 1 minus tangent squared theta. Sweet. So now that's going to be 2 times tangent of theta. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be times square root of 21 over negative 2. All of that divided by 1 minus tangent squared theta, so that's square root of 21 over negative 2. squared, right? I'm going to come down here. 2 root 21 over negative 2. I guess you can see what ha is going to happen here. The 2's are going to end up canceling. Uh, this is going to be an, end up being 1 minus 21 over 4, right? Because the square root of 21 squared is 21. Negative 2 squared is 4, uh, right? So let's simplify this. 2 and then 2 are going to cancel, so I'm going to be left with negative root 21 on top. And what's going to be on the bottom? So I need to make this 4 over 4, so I'm going to change 1 to 4 over 4, minus 21 over 4. So this is negative root 21 over 4 minus 21. What's that? Negative 17 fourths. Okay, so now I've got all these weird fractions. The way I've taught it is... Multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing, so that this is equivalent to 1. I'm going to flip this. We've done a bunch of these examples before. So the 4s end up canceling, the negative 17s end up canceling, and I got this. So now, I'm all the way down here, this will be negative 4 root 21 over negative 17. My negatives now cancel, and I am left with 4 root 21 over 17. I can't simplify this anymore. The 4 and 17, they don't have any common factors. 17 is prime anyway. So that is my answer. 4 root 21 over 17. So, remember, the inverses result in an angle. So hidden inside here is a double angle. Just use the formula, draw your reference triangle, and then the rest of it is just simplifying. If I asked you what the cotangent of 2 theta was, right? What would you have to do? Well, you'd have to do all this work, get here, and then flip it. That's how you do them. Good luck.